Hello and welcome back. This is video number 11 of my Ultimate Ladybug course and I hope you're doing great. It has been a while. I have been in China. Uh, we looked at some um, projects uh, we were currently working on and it was great to see how they come along. And now I'm on sabbatical. My theme for sabbatical is not Ladybug. Thanks God. It's a different topic and I hope I will be able to talk about it at some point occasion it's not yet ready so i i will talk about it when it's when it's ready all right um ladybug we still have a lot to do in the data analysis section and i hope we can finish this in the next one or two videos hopefully today uh, and yes um member shout outs yes member shout outs so we have a new member chalisa wait for it suchi forakul suchi forakul suchi Suchi Vorakul. Chalisa Suchi Vorakul, thanks for joining. Thanks for the support. I know you have been waiting already 21 days to get this shout out, but now I'm back and I hope I can be of good use. And if you have any questions, let me know. Again, thanks for the support. Um, there's not much here on your um, channel, but have you know, did you know that you already, uh, that you joined YouTube 10 years ago? time is running fast anyway thanks again and let me know if any questions now let's jump into rhino all right yes uh, last time what we, what did we do last time if you have any question about this course please go back go to the show notes there is the link to the whole course and start from there last time we looked into how we can um, optimize the orientation of solar panels and that was quite an interesting video i hope today it's going to be interesting as well we will just try to finalize these tools here ladybug hour of the year to date time uh, humidity metrics ladybug mass arithmetic arithmetic uh, operations ladybug relative humidity from dew point ladybug solar mrt from solar components actually we did this already and um oh no indoor solar mrt uh, ladybug solar mrt from solar components okay we can look at that and also the thermal indices so let's see how far we get all right so what what do we have here Last time was quite interesting, directional solar irradiance. We used uh, also Galapagos uh, in that case, which was quite interesting. Now let's see what um, Ladybug, hour of the year to date time, what, what, does, what does it do? Okay, we will go back to this. So don't worry about um, not getting it. If, if you don't uh, get why we need this tool, we will at some point need it and uh, that's when we go back to uh, any of these um, items then it's going to be interesting but some some tools there you think like okay mm, what what the, what i'm going to do with it well now if i for example have a uh, period of time let's say i have i'll grab this here because we built it already so we have an, a period and then here we ha have all the all the hours of that period so for example if i start no, if I start here at um, what's the day? 8 1st of October, 8 uh, p.m. And then at the end date, let's keep the end of the year. And now if I look into here, let's open a panel. So here we have a period, it tells us the period from the 1st of October to the 31st of December. And then between 20 p.m. and 23 p.m. which means it's only the hours every day so every day from the 8th of august to the 31st of december only these three hours are calculated four hours it's four it's, it's four hours because it's the hour from 20 to 21 21 to 22 22 to 23 and 23 to zero four hours that's the period and then we have the dates you know you can he see here okay first of august you see the hours one two three four second of august one two three four and so on and then we have uh the hours of the year this is basically the index of each of these hours now if if you put this in here we get a list now of course we have quite a lot of hours here 600 think 611 hours let's try to reduce it a bit so we 
put here I mean it's just make it very simple it's just two hours it could be even just one hour so this is the hour the current hour and we could now go here and put in the month uh, and it gives us the month it gives us the day hour the minute and the minute <laughs> it's not really yeah that doesn't really does much really and the date and why is it useful well we can you know we could use stuff with this for example we could calculate how many hours we could get the date for a legend for example so there's multiple use for this and we'll see later maybe on how we can use it okay next in here is the humidity metrics let's see let's see what that does what is this tool for the calculate humidity metrics from relative humidity dry pulp temperature and atmospheric pressure if present now let's try to visualize that again it becomes big and bigger but yeah let's let's do it like this it's more interesting Let's copy this. We have four outputs here. So I will use these four uh, charts, which we already created. They just don't get lost, but we just create new ones. Ah, let's turn all these off. Just copy paste. So what do we get out of here? We get it's basically just using the data from the weather data, which we modified and um, tr tries to calculate other humidity metrics. For example, the humidity ratio, kilojoule per kilogram. Interesting. The enthalpy. Well, never heard about it. Let's see what it is. Um, the wet pulp and the dew point. So let's 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 get going. Okay, we need the dry pulp here. Relative humidity, we have that here as well. And parametric pressure. Now, the pressure, I don't think we, did we change it? Yes, we changed it. So with that, we can then go into here. Okay, it gives an interesting output. Enthalpy, wet bulb, and dew point. We just connected these here so we can look at it. So what is the output? Humidity ratio. Okay, this is the, the ratio between water within air. How much water is within air? And it's the, the kilogram of water within one kilogram of air. Very interesting. So, and it's, it's in fractions. So basically blue here is 0 0.01 kilogram water in one kilogram of air and red is uh, 0 0.02 kilogram of water in one kilogram uh in one kilogram of air so the 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 next one is enthalpy and i it took me a bit to understand what that is um i used some help here because sometimes so that's where ChatGPT is really good explaining things in very simple terms and i just ask what is what is enth enthalpy and in very simple terms, so it's just understand, trying to understand what it is. Now, I don't need to scientifically prove the exact formula. I just want to know what it does. So in very simple terms, enthalpy is a measure of the total energy in a system, in that case, the air, including both its internal energy and the energy required to perform work on its surrounding, such as pressure volume work. It's often used to describe the heat content of a substance, or a system that at constant pressure enthalpy is uh, denoted by the letter H and is oh, sorry particularly important in thermodynamics and chemical reactions when a substance undergoes a chemical reaction or changes its state for example like from gas to a liquid the enthalpy change can tell us if heat is released or absorbed during the process now I understand quite a lot more. Now, why is it important in weather data analysis? For meteorologists, why, it's, why, is, it, why, is, why is it important? Um, and yeah, it, it is very interesting. So enthalpy is important in weather data analysis because it helps meteorologists and climatologists 
to understand the thermodynamic properties of the atmosphere, which play a crucial role in weather and climate processes. It provides valuable insight into the energy content and heat exchange within the atmosphere. Here are some reasons why enthalpy is significant in weather data analysis, energy and temperature. Enthalpy is directly related to internal energy of the air. By analyzing changes in enthalpy, meteorologists can better understand how the temperature of the air is affected during various weather phenomena, such as heating or cooling due to radiation, convection or advection. Phase change. When water changes its phase from a gas water vapor to a liquid, condensation, or a solid, ice, enthalpy plays a key role in determining the amount of heat released or absorbed during the phase change. This is essential for understanding cloud formation, precipitation, and other atmospheric processes. Stability and instability. Enthalpy is involved in determining the stability or instability of the atmosphere. The vertical distribution of enthalpy helps meteorologists assess the potential for convective processes like thunderstorms, which are critical for severe weather predictions. Interesting, interesting. And there's way more. You know, get <laughs> get ChatGPT and ask. It might give you different answers. All right, let's go back here. So there's more and more, and this seems like it's very, very important uh, in meteorology and clim climatology. And yeah, learn about it. We all need to learn. So these are the two which we can guide out of the weather data. And then we have, oh, yes. And then this is per, let's see here. Okay, the kilojoule. Of course, now for me, this doesn't tell me much. I, I don't really, I don't know if this is a lot or not. Kilojoule per kilogram of air, you know. A meteorologist will probably know exactly what that means. For me, I don't know yet, but that would be the next kind of avenue you, you could go uh, and explore and learn more about. The wet pulp temperature. Wet pulp temperature, We ha so we have the dry pulp temperature and the, the dew point temperature. And now this is the wet pulp temperature. The wet pulp temperature, let's check this out. The wet pulp temperature is in um, Celsius and it's the lowest temperature which can be reached evaporating water into air. So it has something to do with the evaporative cooling. If you evaporate water into air, it will reach, it will uh, saturate to to the final 100% of the 100%, it cannot saturate more, and that's it. And that correlates with the temperature of the air. And at that point, this is the lowest it can reach. So if if you have 100% saturation or 100% humidity in the air, that's the lowest you can. That's the lowest how the temperature can uh, cool down. I hope this is the 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 simplest I can explain it. And that has something to do, of course, with the pressure, uh, the dry pulp temperature, and the humidity. And that's why you have different uh, wet pulp temperatures um, throughout the day. And then we have the dew points, and that should actually correlate quite, quite a lot with the previous. So the dew point is the temperature where where water reaches the point of maximum saturation of the air and then it uh, creates liquid rain. So to conclude, the enthalpy, so we have the humidity ratio, this is the amount of water in the air per kilogram. We have the enthalpy, which is the energy holding in the atmosphere per kilogram, kilojoules per kilogram. We have the wet pulp, pulp temperature, which is the lowest temperature can be, which can be reached through evaporative cooling. Before it's before it's 100% um, saturated, this is the lowest you can get with evaporating cooling. And then we have the dew point. It's the temperature where the air is fully saturated with water, 
with, with humidity, 100% humidity. That's the before it starts to uh, generate dew or water. I, yeah, I think it's pretty clear and it's quite interesting. Um, I didn't. <laughs> again, I'm I'm surprised and uh, you know really uh, mesmerized by what what in these like small little tools is uh, hidden. Okay, next one here, the mass arithmetic operation. So for example, what we could use this for, and I'm not sure where we're getting to with this, but now I have these two charts, which are both in Celsius. So I could use the wet bulb temperature here and the dew point temperature and choose an operator, which for example, I choose uh, subtraction okay then yeah, get a new data set and let's just get a new chart here I copy one of these points it's gonna be my new point at the moment this is the same and I can now place this in here and I kind of get the difference between oh, what did I use here oh it seems like uh, I didn't put it in I mean I could also use a panel and say subtract just calculates the difference between the the wet bulb temperature and the dew point temperature it could be very interesting i don't know exactly for what i could use it but you know it's good to know that we can do it because later on when we face a certain problem we suddenly realize oh that's what i could do in ladybug you know sometimes uh, it's, it's the same with rhino itself i use rhino since many many years but there's so many tools that I sometimes forget what it can do. And I use still my old little tricks and didn't realize that actually there's a tool for it where it can do it 10 times as fast. You know, this is one of these things. If you go through each item, you realize, oh, okay, I can do this and this and this, not knowing yet for what, but later on suddenly you realize, okay, that could be really interesting to check out. And that is one of these tools, mass arithmetic operation. Okay, let's get the relative humidity from dew point. And we can actually, I think we can compare these. So we have the relative humidity. We have a relative, relative humidity already. So in case you would not have it, you, if you would only have the temperature and the dew point temperature, then uh, you could calculate the relative humidity. And the question is, was it calculated or was it was it measured so let's um let's get some new charts here again i'll copy these so we put the relative humidity here and we set it here so this is our relative humidity over the whole year and now we compare this with the calculated relative humidity that's going to be interesting so dry pot temperature dew point temperature and place this here okay I mean, looks. <laughs> don't I don't. I'm not sure if there's any difference. I don't think there's any difference. I think it's completely. It's it's the same. It's the same. So the question is now: Was this dew point? Um, no. What was this re relative humidity actually calculated already? It's a just a calculation of that. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah. Again. So we know. Okay. We can do that if we need that uh, at least. And let's jump into the next ladybug solar um, mean time mean radiant temperature mean radiant temperature as a result of short wave solar use solar using horizontal solar components direct direct horizontal and diffuse horizontal solar this component this component uses the solar calc model of the ashray 55 to estimate the effects of short wave solar and simple sky exposure exposure method to determine long wave radiant exchange let's try and we did this before and let's just check we have ladybug in the solar mean radiant temperature and we have the outdoor solar mean radiant temperature so and let's get this here okay. location long wave mean radiant temperature it's interesting how would i know it's all a bit esoteric because we don't have really the data. A single number or an hourly data collection with the long wave mean radiant temperature around the person in degrees Celsius. 
again, this is, is so hard because we don't have the data for it. I mean, we can, of course, use the tripod temperature. Then we have the direct horizontal radiation. Oh, the direct horizontal radiation, the diffuse horizontal radiation. Fraction body exposure. This is how much sunlight. Again, we don't have that at the moment. The ground reference in the soli, solar body parameter. Solar body parameter. Again, this is about what you wear and so on. And then you have a run button and then you have an output. Again, this is a tool we might need later. And let's see. I will not continue here because we did that already before. We we used the other two tools here. The ladybug in the solar a mean radiant temperature and the outdoor mean radiant temperature and we'll see maybe later we need exactly this but at the moment yeah let's park it for a while um, so I'll keep it here um, and now let's look at the last tool and yes then we can jump into the next and here we did quite a lot already but um, we will look at this again a bit more into the in detail Um, okay, okay, okay. The ladybug thermal indices. Okay, let's check this out. <sighs> Again, the mean radiant temperature. Oh my god, okay. I guess we still need to do it. Let's add a run button here. Run toggle, boolean toggle. By the way, we don't need to add anything here because these are all just, um, they have already a default value in here. And that gives us the mean radiant temperature. The air temperature is just a normal temperature. Dry pop temperature, relative humidity, wind velocity. We don't really know. I mean, we have we have the wind speed, but we don't really know from where it's coming. It's a bit tricky with the um, with weather data which we modified. It's hard to tell if this wind. Um, if the wind is exactly the same, you know, probably not. Nevertheless, that's all we have. Uh, and then we have an output here. We have the WBGT, the wet bulb globe temperature. <laughs> so these tools, let's go through here because it's quite interesting what that actually is, this thermal indices. So calculate thermal indices that have historical been used by meteorologists. All of them are feels like temperatures that attempt to account for factors beyond the temperature. These include the following, the web, wet pulp globe temperature, the heat index and the wind chill temperature. Most of these indices have fallen out of use in favor of the Universal Thermal Climate Index. However, they are still used in some regions and are part of older codes and standards. Um, yeah, we could actually plug them into something again. I will just, I will just you reuse here the, the, the free here on the top. The chill, the wind chill temperature. <laughs> okay, so... And then you can, uh, of course, at home you can test can check how that correlates with the universal climate index. The wet bulb globe temperature, they're very different. Heat index temperature goes from 26 to 6. Here it goes from 27 to minus 5. And the wind chill temperature goes from 29 to 3 degrees. So quite different. But yeah, it's, I mean, weather is a very complex thing. And it's hard to predict. Even the universal climate index is not as we have seen, is not that um, exact. Nevertheless, it's better than nothing. All right, so this was video number 11, and I'm looking forward to the next uh, topic. See you in the next video, video number 12. Bye.